No problem. One of the cool things that you guys have that I want to talk about today is the types of solutions that you have for demand response. Could you give us a big level, high level, you know, type of version of what is demand response and what types of problems are accumulating in demand response and then how are you tackling them? Well, in the past, demand response only really uh, pertained to the large industrial customers that responded to ISO uh, programs. So those programs are going on today through those those ISOs but nowadays the residential consumer can can participate in those through their utility and the smaller uh, commercial industrial customers can participate so what Snyder has done we also we have a buildings practices group we've got a solutions group we also have the industry groups which can take care of all those different different sectors of demand response and we're just now coming out with a residential solution so the residential customers can participate in demand response programs through the uh, utility programs. Talk to us a little bit about the history of demand response and you know, as buildings are obviously getting smarter, buildings can become more of a part of what it overall is, but, but what is really demand response and how are buildings becoming, you know, playing, what role are they playing right now? Yeah, building dis building our demand response for buildings is actually the ability to shift load or curtail load at certain periods of time when there's reliability issues or supply issues in the grid. So what happens is is with the more intelligent systems now in buildings, customers or are, are, are building owners are able to curtail use or curtail use for sh for small amounts of time or shift that usage to later times when the energy is less expensive or when there's a when the reliability isn't a factor so with the intelligence of buildings Snyder can go out and interface with those intelligence systems and actually improve the reliability of the grid give us a little more detail of how Snyder's actually doing that. well we're doing that through our building solutions group uh, we're doing that through our, our building automation group. So the, the thought is is to take um, software and actually be able to aggregate those loads as needed by, by utilities and so they can go to those loads and put those into, into the ISO programs. So is the value really that customers that own buildings in the commercial industrial sector that they can save money as well or is there also ways to make money at the same time? Well, you're absolutely right about that. There's ways, there, there's three, three, three things that, that are features of these programs. First of all, customers can save money by not using energy during high peak, high cost times. They can, they can uh, uh, be green for the environment and they can also uh, uh, save themselves some additional cost down the road. And when someone's trying to figure out, you know, when's the right timing, is this the type of thing where utilities are messaging these types of companies saying, hey, we need you to shut off at this time, and this is what the Schneider Electric Solution is offering? Absolutely right. It's, it's, it's the ability for the utilities or the ISOs to communicate with the building owners, the industrial customers, the utilities that, that have access to the residential consumer. So those residential consumers and, and uh, commercial industrial consumers can actually respond to the market and to the grid reliability. Is there ever an instance where a customer can actually get paid for participating in demand response? Absolutely. Uh, most, of the, most of the ISOs now have programs where they can get paid to curtail. And some of those are very lucrative. For example, last year, PJM paid out over $500 million in, in uh, payments for demand response. So it, it's very lucrative for people to be able to shift their production or curtail production if they can do it. But I'd imagine that typically the folks that are participating are going to be in larger, medium-sized, large buildings because they are handling larger loads. Would this also apply for small businesses? All up and down the line. It can, it can be any size of customer. So the nice thing about this is everybody can contribute, everybody can be green, and everybody can benefit. So I'm a business owner or I'm a building owner and 
I don't necessarily know, you know how to get connected to demand response programs. How does somebody like me find out ways to get connected? Well, a good way to get connected is to contact your local utility, contact your ISO, or even attend events such as Distributech. And personally, I'm curious to know why you find this industry fascinating and why you're ultimately doing what you do. Well, it's, it's, there, there are problems that are on the foreseeable future with grid infrastructure that, that's actually getting old and needs to be replaced. And it's the right thing to do as far as being able to be green and, and, and control carbon emissions and be able to uh, reduce the pollution that we have in the world right now. Well, Dave, thanks so much for the time today. I appreciate you being with us. Thank you. Appreciate it.